May, we were learning about life cycles. For our life cycle project, we watched and observed caterpillars turning into butterflies. We had a lot of fun, and I'm going to share that experience with all of you, along with teaching you a little bit about the Painted Lady Butterflies. The Butterfly from Start to Finish there's something very special about butterflies. Maybe it's their gentle nature, striking colors, or graceful flight. Butterflies have symbolic meanings in many cultures, and they've inspired artists and poets over the centuries. They've been written into fairy tales, woven into tapestries, and painted on pottery. Butterflies touch the hearts of young and old alike. And if one actually lands on you, somehow you feel honored, as if you were singled out as an especially trustworthy companion. Much of the allure of butterflies lies in the fact that they're com complicated creatures. Like ladybugs, ants, bees, and fleas, they undergo what is called complete metamorphosis. This means that they start out in one form and change into a completely different creature by the time they are fully developed. We can't think of many things that are as amazing as the life cycle of the butterfly. Progress from egg to caterpillar to chrysalis to gorgeous winged creature all in the course of a few weeks is a rare and wonderful achievement. And here's how it works. How a butterfly lays its eggs. Most female butterflies are able to mate as soon as they emerge from their chrysalis. Some males need a day or two before they are ready, and on rare occasions certain species of male butterflies will search for a female that is still inside her chrysalis, almost ready to emerge. The male peels open a small part of the chrysalis, mates with the female, and leaves behind some of his pheromone, a chemical substance that lets other males know that this female is already mated. But most butterflies find their mate during the course of the day as they fly around gardens, fields, parks, and wooded areas searching for sweet things to eat. The butterfly egg is covered by a strong protective membrane. Tiny pores covering the egg's surface allows the caterpillar embryo to breathe inside the egg. The egg may change color just before it's ready to hatch. The egg usually hatches within a few days, depending on the weather and the time of year. The dark head of the caterpillar may be visible as it eats a hole in the egg so it can crawl out onto a leaf. Some caterpillars eat the rest of their egg shell before they start eating their host plant. Butterflies have chemical receptors, something like our taste buds, but they're on their feet tongue and antennae. They use them to smell the air, taste their food and their host plants and pick up the scent of a mate. When a female is ready to lay eggs she begins to search for appropriate host plants for the young caterpillars to eat. She finds these plants by sight and smell. Landing on a plant of choice and scratching the leaf surface to taste it with her feet. How a Caterpillar Grows Butterflies spend the early part of their lives, the larval stage, as hungry caterpillars. They devour the leaves of their host plant so they can store up enough energy for the metamorphosis, the change from caterpillar to butterfly. For a, a couple weeks on average, depending on the weather, they do nothing but eat. A caterpillar's rate of growth is controlled by such factors as heat, humidity, and the overall quantity and quality of the host plant's leaves. The caterpillar will grow faster if its host plant's leaves are young and tender, and therefore easy to chew, chew and digest. I'm a caterpillar.
day eight and we've got our first caterpillar ready to go into the chrysalis stage. I know it's hard to see because I'm shaky and the container is hard, a little fuzzy to see through because of all the webbing from them. They are so big, it's only been eight days and one's ready. I know it's hard to see with all of the, the silk webbing everywhere, but this one right here is in this chrysalis and there's four others on the top. They have, I just found them this morning on the top and one is still on the bottom eating. So one is in his chrysalis, looks like four more are ready for that stage and they will be in their chrysalis within the next 24 hours. And there's one more left to go. Pretty neat stuff to watch. Of course, the more a caterpillar eats, the faster it will grow. But a caterpillar's skin can stretch only a small amount. Once it reaches its limit, stretch detectors in the joints between the body segments send signals to the brain to trigger the growth of a new, bigger skin underneath the old one. The old skin is no longer needed and must be shed. This process is called molting. Growth spurts between the molts are called instars. A caterpillar may molt up to five times depending on the species, the weather conditions, and the availability of food. Caterpillars should never be disturbed during this process. They are extremely vulnerable to stress and injury, possibly fatal at this stage. There are several early indications that a caterpillar is ready to molt. It stops eating, it may sit very still for a long time, and it looks swollen, a bit like an overstuffed sausage. To shed its old skin, the caterpillar first spins a small patch of silk as an anchoring point on a leaf or stem. Then it turns around and holds on to the silk with its rear claspers. The old head capsule pops off first. Next, the caterpillar wiggles out of the old dry skin to reveal a new loose, moist skin, still damp and pliable. The new skin stretches as the caterpillar takes in air. Some caterpillars eat their old skin at the end of the molting process. They may change color or physical appearance with each successive molt. The coloration of some caterpillars allows them to avoid hungry predators. The green and browns blend in with the environment or resemble bird droppings. Other caterpillars are brightly colored as if to warn pred potential predators against eating them. For instance, the bright orange and black monarch caterpillar absorbs toxins from milkweed plants, which can make vertebrates, animals with backbones, like birds, lizards, and mammals, very sick. These animals quickly learn to leave monarch caterpillars alone. However, Invertebrate predators like wasps and spiders are immune to these poisons and will happily eat monarchs for lunch. A caterpillar's markings can also help protect it. Some caterpillars have false eye spots, patterns on the skin that look like large eyeballs. If approached, the caterpillar may rear up on its hind legs, perhaps attempting something to look like a snake. Swallowtail caterpillars have a special defense organ called an osmetarium. This is an orange or red forked gland that is hidden under the skin behind the head. When the caterpillar feels threatened, it can shoot out the gland like a snake tongue and touch the predator with it. If the sudden whiplash movement doesn't spook the intruder, the foul-smelling substance that the gland secretes will offend even a human nose at close range. 
Other caterpillars take a more passive approach. They curl up and drop to the ground as if threatened. Once they feel safe enough, they return to the host plant. Another tactic is the headbutt. If a caterpillar feels something brush against its skin, it may snap its head from side to side in attempt to push away the intruder. Most caterpillars are solitary eaters, but a few species dine together in groups. When they feel threatened, all the caterpillars may twitch at the same time, perhaps as a way to scare predators. How a chrysalis is formed. Once a caterpillar has reached maturity, it begins to look for a good place to palpate or enter the chrysalis phase. It stops eating and may empty the undigested contents of its gut. Sometimes its color change. Generally, the caterpillar leaves its host plant and wanders away to find a safe place for which to hang. All sorts of locations may be suitable. A pile of wood offers good protection. The underside of a large leaf provides shelter from rain. A tree branch is an easy place to blend in. Sometimes the caterpillar spends several hours crawling around to find the perfect spot. After the caterpillar has chosen a place, it begins to spin a patch of silk that will be the anchoring point for the chrysalis. The caterpillar has a gland called a spinneret below its mouth that produces silk. By moving its head back and forth, the caterpillar can weave a mat out of silk threads. Using special clasping hooks on its rear end, the caterpillar then backs up and grabs the silk patch and holds on tight. In fact, its life may depend on the strength of its grip. If the soon-to-be chrysalis can't hang on through wind and rain, it will probably die when it hits the ground bursting like a water balloon. If it survives the fall, a predator may eat it. Just hanging around. After the caterpillar gets a good grip, it may hang upside down as monarchs do, or spin a silk thread and use it as a harness to support itself upright, as swallowtails do. Up to now, juvenile hormone has kept the insect in the caterpillar stage through each molt. Now that it is fully grown, production of this hormone has stopped, and the caterpillar sheds its skin for the last time to reveal a chrysalis. The old skin splits first at the head, then the pupa, wiggles and squirms its way out. When the skin is peeled all the way down to our rear end, the pupa must twitch violently to break the small ligament attached to the skin. Then. The skin falls away like a stretched out old sock. On the chrysalis, once the chrysalis dries and hardens a bit, it gains some protection from the weather and small predators. Its dull coloration, usually shades of green or brown, helps it blend in among leaves and twigs. If this phase of its life cycle occurs during warm summer months, the butterfly should be fully developed and ready for eclosion or emergence from its chrysalis in about two weeks. If the insect enters its chrysalis phase during the cooler months of autumn, then it may wait out the winter by going into diapause, hibernating until warmer spring weather arrives. Sometimes butterflies that emerge in the spring are smaller than the ones that emerge during the summer months. During the chrysalis phase, the caterpillar liquefies inside the chrysalis and reorganizes almost magically transforming into a butterfly. Even after decades of research, all the details of this metamorphosis are not completely understood. Butterfly Reborn When the butterfly reaches maturity, a special hormone triggers a set of events that allows the adult insect to break free from its chrysalis shell. Etymologists believe the butterfly takes in air to swell itself up, causing the chrysalis to split open along specific weakening seams. In some species, the chrysalis becomes transparent at this time, and you can actually see the pattern of the wings through the membrane. Using its new long legs, the butterfly pulls itself out of the chrysalis and clings to the empty shell.
so that its crumpled wings can hang down freely. It begins to pump its wings slowly up and down and constricts its body to force the yellowish insect blood into the wing veins so they can expand and open up to their full size. As the veins fill with liquid, the wings stretch out and start to dry. The butterfly has only an hour to extend its wings fully. If they aren't extended within this time period, they will harden in their folded position and be permanently deformed. It is vital that the butterfly not be handled or disturbed at this time. Without the ability to fly properly, the butterfly cannot live very long. During this time, the butterfly must also fuse the two halves of its tongue, called the proboscis. By using microscopic muscles, the butterfly interlocks the halves to form a tube. It will use the tube to suck the nectar and other fluids it needs to survive. If a butterfly is unable to fuse its tongue, it will starve. After a short time, the newly emerged butterfly excretes a fluid called meconium, the liquid waste left over from metamorphosis. Once its wings are completely dry and its tongue is in working order, the butterfly takes to the air. How a butterfly experiences the world. A butterfly emerges from its chrysalis a fully grown adult. You may see different sizes of the same species of butterfly, but often the differences is due to factors such as weather and food supply that affected the growing caterpillar. Sometimes the male and female of a species are naturally different sizes. Usually the egg carrying female is larger. Most butterflies have a very short lifespan, about a week or two. During this time, the butterflies focus mainly on searching for food and finding a mate rely heavily on their keen senses of sight, smell, and taste to locate all the things they need to survive and reproduce. Sight. Butterflies have large eyes that can see many colors, including those in the ultraviolet range that humans can't see. If we use special lighting, we're able to observe that many flowers almost glow with ultraviolet patterns. To the butterflies, these flowers must look like brightly lit runways. Butterflies can also detect movement better than we can. That's why it can be so difficult to sneak up on them. During the month of May, we observed the painted lady butterflies. I had gotten a kit of painted lady caterpillars and we watched them grow and turn into butterflies. We watch them transform from caterpillars to chrysalis and then emerge from their chrysalis as butterflies. It was a fun and memorable experience for all of us and I would love to do this again with the kids. We all enjoyed it and we all learned something. We did this because over April and May we were learning all about life cycles. So this was a way for the kids to learn about life cycles firsthand, seeing it with their own eyes. I love doing projects like this because it makes learning so much more fun and this is something that will stick with them for the rest of their lives. They will remember seeing this and enjoying seeing something transform from one creature to a completely different creature and it's a great project for homeschoolers i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please leave a like and don't forget to hit the subscribe button i also have another video up i'll leave a link in the below of all of the different books I had gotten for the life cycle study. Thank you so much for watching.